Not long after Cherokee people were removed to Indian Territory, all eyes were on our tribe as we set up our own judicial system. In this Cherokee Almanac, we look back at the murder trial of Archilla Smith. The years immediately following the Cherokee Nation's forced relocation to Indian Territory were a violent era of civil war among the Cherokees. There's a lot of tension that's here once the um, Rosses and the removal party all ends up here in Indian Territory. Just a few months after the final detachment arrives um, in 1839, you have the brutal killings of Major Ridge, John Ridge, and Elias Boudinot. That just really sparks what we call the Cherokee Civil War that begins to happen here in the Cherokee Nation. We've done away with Klan revenge law a long time back, but uh, there was still a lot of revenge killing done. It was just chaotic, and there was lots of tension and lots of uh, uh, killing. Although the Cherokee Nation had ratified a new constitution in late 1839 and passed laws concerning criminal and civil codes, it had yet to test its court system with a capital punishment case. The 1840 murder trial of Archilla Smith in Tahlequah, Indian Territory, would soon change that. So Archilla Smith was one of the signers of the Treaty of Nui Chota, which is the infamous treaty that exchanges Cherokee lands in the East for Cherokee lands here in the West. After they signed the treaty, most of them move over here into present-day Oklahoma and Indian Territory at the time. There's a few written records that say that he had a little bit of a hot temper. Archilla Smith was good friends with Stan Wadey, who was also known to kind of be of similar character. Late in 1839, Smith was visiting friends on Caney Creek, south of Tahlequah, capital of the Cherokee Nation. A young Cherokee, John McIntosh, a member of John Ross's Nationalist Party that opposed Cherokee removal, was also present. By the end of the day, McIntosh lay dead, stabbed to death in front of witnesses. McIntosh is kind of just making a big ruckus there at the camp and um, riding his horse back and forth. He had been drunk and was running his horse up beside Archilla's and aggravating him and making a lot of racket. And Archilla uh, told him to quieten down, and he didn't. And next thing you know, he stabbed him several times. Several months passed before a warrant was sworn out for Smith's arrest. He was captured in late November of 1840 and his trial set for December 15th. We didn't have a jail built or anything like that, so they were allowed to go home and get their affairs in order um, for their family. The trial opened with jury selection under Judge Looney Price. Stan Wadey served as defense counsel and entered a not guilty plea on behalf of his friend Archilla Smith. The court brought in interpreters for the various Cherokee, Creek, and English language speakers taking part in the trial. This trial is remarkable for the dignity and decorum under which it was carried out. Cherokee Nation's legal system received national attention when the trial was covered for the New York Journal of Commerce by noted writer John Howard Payne. John Howard Payne had written um, best-selling plays. He knew how to capture drama. John Howard Payne had already had relationships with, with Cherokee people for about a decade at this point. And it, his intention is to write a longer history of the Cherokee Nation, not just um, the event itself, but some of the kind of broader social interactions that are happening with it. This is the first time that the Cherokees are actually con conducting a trial like this, even the jury. They had so many questions that they were asking the judge because they didn't understand a lot of the terms uh, that were being used during the trial. I mean, it ends up being a hung jury. Christmas Day passes with no court, but with instructions to convene a new jury. This new trial is presided over by Chief Justice Jesse Bushyhead, a minister and much beloved figure. During his instructions to the jury, Judge Bushyhead reminds them at length that the old clan and blood laws cannot be applied to this case. He carefully explains to them that there are degrees of death under the current law and that only a willful murderer can receive capital punishment. If the most unquestionable proofs appear that he is guilty, he must then suffer the extreme penalty of the law. For it is the principle of our present written law 
not to harm the innocent. After rehearing the testimony and asking many questions, the second jury deliberates and eventually returns with a guilty verdict for Smith. He is sentenced to hang on January 1st, 1841. After Artilla Smith is convicted, uh, we don't have a gallows in place at this point to be able to hang him from. They end up taking him outside of town a little bit to a tree, and there's a lot of spectators that are there. John Howard Payne's trial write-up in the New York Journal of Commerce the following April is considered the first time a trial of any Native nation was covered by the media. It's really important that we have these kinds of counts that enable us to see um, how judicial proceedings are happening. It affirms the sovereignty of the Cherokee Nation. You might say is a milestone because it sort of symbolizes our intention the willingness of both parties to be governed civilly. 